The fact that fetal stem cells have only nine months to create an entire human being should help illustrate the power of these cells in comparison to any other stem cell type. When they enter your body, they are programmed to seek out anything that needs repair, redefining the meaning of the power of Mother Nature. For the record, I couldn't find anyone to agree to go on camera that opposed fetal stem cell therapy. I reached out to countless anti-abortion politicians, including Mrs. Blackburn from Tennessee, who chaired an anti-fetal stem cell congressional hearing in 2016. Sell human fetal tissue for a profit, you break the law. Donate fetal tissue with zero profit, you are within the law. I also reached out to anti-abortion activist and Christian evangelist Franklin Graham, Billy Graham's son, who also refused to participate. My contact with various stem cell experts had similar responses. When I contacted James Thompson, Time Magazine's Man Who Brought You Stem Cells, for his participation in this documentary as a stem cell expert, his response was simply, I'm sorry, but it is out of my area of expertise. Gaining legal access to fetal stem cell therapy in the United States is currently next to impossible. CIRM is running a handful of clinical trials, but these trials are currently 12 years and at least a billion dollars away from meeting FDA's requirements for market approval. And that's just for one ailment. It could theoretically take hundreds of years and billions of dollars to obtain approval for all relevant ailments. The problem we have is we don't have, after 15 years of this regulatory paradigm in place, we don't have anything close to being reviewed by the FDA for approval. But I think when CERN steps back and looks at that regulatory framework, we think, well, if there were something in the middle that, weren't, that wasn't as daunting as the current regulatory approach, instead of taking these innovative cell therapies overseas or having them be under the surveillance of FDA, would they just not come into the fold uh, and, and, and do the work necessary to show they're safe and effective in a timely fashion and in a way which, uh, which from a, a cost standpoint, enabled them to be successful? There are only a handful of places in the world one can obtain fetal stem cells. Another company is Stemetica, based in San Diego, who first made headlines in 2015 after treating hockey legend Gordy Howe in Tijuana, Mexico. Gordy Howe, one of the greatest hockey players of all time, was on his deathbed last year after suffering a stroke. His son, Dr. Murray Howe, had actually started writing his father's eulogy when he received a phone call from Stemetica, a San Diego-based stem cell company. Gordy Howe's stroke had left him unable to walk, but within eight hours of his first stem cell treatment, he sat up in his bed at the clinic. Well, he said, well, I'll just walk to the bathroom. I said, well, you can't walk. He said, well, the hell I can't. <laughs> and uh, he sits up and he puts his feet over the edge of the bed, and I was absolutely astounded that he could do that. When Gordy Howe's story first broke in 2015, we reached out to CTV, the Canadian news organization that first covered the story. They told us that Gordy received neural stem cells from a sample of fetal tissue from a 12-week-old fetus and bone marrow immune cells from a healthy 21-year-old donor from a U.S. tissue bank. Once the American media got a hold of this story, Stemetica began getting some negative publicity for using fetal stem cells. Stemetica then suddenly began claiming that the fetal brain tissue they were using was not from a 12-week-old fetus, but a 14 to 16-week-old fetus instead, claiming that they're really considered legally adult stem cells even if they're fetal derived. To make matters more confusing, if the bone marrow immune cells Stemetica is using are from a 21-year-old donor and is being injected into patients like Gordy Howe without genetically matching these patients, why do we have so many bone marrow registries around the world if they are successfully giving mature 21-year-old bone marrow cells to patients without matching them genetically? Stemetica failed to respond to any of our questions or requests to participate in this documentary. Gordy Howe passed away at 88 from what his family says was simply old age. It's important to realize that just how not all stem cell types are created equal, the same is true for the various fetal stem cell companies. In the case of Stem Cell of America and Stemetica, 
They both claim to use replicated cells as opposed to using fresh aborted cells, most likely due to the increasing difficulty in obtaining fresh fetal cells in the United States. Of the handful of the American fetal stem cell experts that agreed to speak to me privately and not on camera, most said that replicating the cells wasn't a good idea, as the cells could not only lose efficacy, but they also run the risk of maturing beyond their productive role. Also, Stemetica only uses neuronal cells from a single fetal brain and bone marrow cells from a single adult donor. Stem Cell of America claims to use only neuronal fetal brain cells and fetal liver cells, the liver cells that will eventually become the body's bone marrow. This isn't to say this method hasn't made many patients happy, but when you look at M-Cell, the world's pioneers of this innovation, due to M-Cell's ability to operate openly and legally in full cooperation with the Ukraine Ministry of Health, M-Cell harvests and injects each patient with more than a dozen fetal stem cell types, widening the cell's ability to help the patient beyond what only brain, liver, or bone marrow tissue can offer. And M-Cell does not believe that replicating their cells is a good idea. While Stemetica has begun to publish some of their data, Stem Cell of America has yet to author any of their own peer-reviewed publications. While M-Cell has been continuously publishing their peer-reviewed data for more than 25 years. Uh, in cases of diabetes, for example, uh, the child who has initial phase of diabetes 1 is sentenced to very low quality of life to uh, debilitating complications. Uh, in many cases, this will uh, end with uh, kidney transplantation, with blindness, with amputations of uh, extreme, uh, of legs, of foot, um, and so on. But in case of our inter uh, intervention uh, in the very beginning of this disease, we will change the destiny of the child. He will keep being a uh, diabet uh, diabetic patient but uh, the cause of diabetes will be very mild with no complications at all. The results are not effective in 100%. They are effective in 70%. But in cases of uncurable diseases, it is something. Wrapping up my three-year journey investigating this story, I tend to take greater notice of the millions of people around me. We certainly have no shortage of human beings especially when I see homeless people sharing the same space as millionaires. We are clearly still struggling to take care of the people that are already among us. The human race collectively aborts up to 50 million fetuses every year, whether we agree with abortion or not. It doesn't matter if we are pro-life or pro-choice, we are going to do nothing to change the hard reality that people are going to continue to seek abortions, especially when 22% of all pregnancies in the United States end in abortion. The argument that women will start getting pregnant on purpose just to have an abortion to provide more fetal stem cells is, well, absurd. No woman wants an abortion unless that abortion is absolutely necessary. And if she does choose that path, how is that decision any of our business? So, uh, what do we have to say about all this? Except all I can say is we're not going to see this technology available to the Americans anytime soon. Between the anti-abortionists that do not want to see this happen and the pharmaceutical industry that will take full advantage of that and not allow this to happen. This is probably the biggest threat to anything the industry has ever seen. So many people ask me how I am doing on the therapy. And frankly, I feel amazing. I can't really speak for Stem Cell of America so much as MSIP. Um, as I was sort of rushed in and out, 30 minutes, no medical testing. I did blood work before and after. Nothing significant changed in my health. But with M-Cell, I had a full ultrasound that showed, showed a slightly in, uh, enlarged pancreas, and that normalized in only four months, completely normal. My cholesterol was really, really high uh, on my, based on my blood test, but uh, not anymore. Four months later, my cholesterol normalized. You can't do that without pharma drugs. So um, it's pretty remarkable. It is my hope that everyone I know, including my loved ones, get a chance to get this therapy. 
But perhaps the most noticeable thing that happened to me that I experienced shortly after the cells was, uh, aside from like skin things clearing up, I slept better, uh, energy increased dramatically, but my libido exploded, absolutely exploded, like an 18 year old again. And uh, that's not reason enough. So I feel quite privileged as I'm only one in 15,000 people across this whole planet who have had fetal stem cells. And you can't film? All right, all right, thank you. No problem, no problem.